Good morning, and welcome to Catholicity with Mr. Norino for Friday, January 22nd, 2021. Huge day, because on Monday, all of our students get to go back to school in Fort Francis and Stratton. So a big thank you to all of our teachers, ECEs, EAs, administrators, secretarial, in those schools who have been working from home, remotely teaching our students, and we'll have an opportunity uh, at Our Lady of the Way and St. Mary to be back in those buildings on Monday. Very happy that you get to rejoin your school community students and very happy that, uh, at least for the time being, we get to be back in our cohorts and learning as full units in person again. Really looking forward to that for you. Um, now, one thing that I want to uh, raise today is uh, an appreciation for two very specific groups of people that have been working extra hard for all of our online learners and all of our in-person learners. First off, the principals in our schools have been doing amazing things for their staffs in these very troubling times. So all of our principals and all of our vice principals in, um, in our schools as well. So big, big respect and props to them. The IT department in the schools and at the board level also deserve a shout out today because unprecedented times bring out the best in people and bring out the resourcefulness in our IT department. So huge shout out to Mr. Drombolis, Mr. Bellis, Mr. Maxwell, Mr. Moorhouse, Mr. Cedars, um, as well, Mrs. Cousino, who is our, our teaching enabled learning teacher, uh, for being available to assist in so many ways. So our, our tech support guys, our, our online learning people, and the people uh, at the top who help organize and, and keep everything running smoothly. Really, with the amount of possible disruptions that there could be, just thank you. Thank you. With this being the end of a particularly unprecedented week. Um, there's a lot of healing that needs to happen for our brothers and sisters uh, to the south. The inauguration happened on Wednesday and appreciation for the people that teach our students was made very clear by the lead singer of one of my favorite bands, uh, Dave Grohl from the Foo Fighters. I want to close with that today. So if you hadn't had an opportunity to see any of the inauguration, um, with the Bernie Sanders memes and everything. This is the one takeaway for all of us who are teaching students in these uncertain times. That's my ramble. Let's get to the Jamboard. All right. So what we're going to have an opportunity to look at today are some of the questions that were asked in the sacrament page. And the responses to our scripture question very very similar to last week so what we'll do is we'll have a look at these and answer those questions that you have so we'll start with dax who asks us why is the flame a symbol for confirmation well at confirmation when we're in grade six and there's several candidates that will be working with me probably starting next week uh, to work through their spiritual journey to become confirmed members of our church we reflect on the disciples actually having the Holy Spirit descend to them in the upper room. So a very, very well-known art theme is the disciples having that happen. And one thing that happened in the scripture is that they began in speaking they began speaking in different tongues, so they were all speaking different languages, so they'd be able to go out and, and uh, evangelize to different groups who spoke different languages. But the flame of the Holy Spirit flickered above their heads. So when we think of the Holy Spirit descending, we think of a lot of different representations, but it's the fire of the Holy Spirit. Not a consuming fire, but an illuminating fire. Something that makes us known and makes our, our spirit tied to the Holy Spirit. So the flame is a symbol because of what was written 
in the scriptures. So thanks for that question, Dax. Um, Brooklyn wants to know, why do they put oil when they do the anointing of the sick? Why is there an oil of the sick used? Well, the history of our church has olive branches representing specific things to our faith in our sacramentals. So an olive is viewed as the Son of God. The oil from the olive is viewed as the Spirit. So when we look at the Holy Spirit and what the purpose of anointing the sick is to reconnect the Holy Spirit to the person who is not feeling well, we know that olive oil is used in all of the sacramental oils, and the olive oil represents the Holy Spirit. So we're anointed with oil when we are baptized, we're anointed with oil when we're confirmed, we're anointed with oil when we are sick. And that all has to do with the Holy Spirit and the representation of the Holy Spirit by olive oil. You also remember that when Jesus was praying in Gethsemane, he went and prayed under the olive trees. That has some significance as well. Bobby wants to know, why do people get married in the church? So we're thinking of the sacrament of marriage. Why do they get married in the church? Well, all sacraments take place in the church when possible. And we teach that marriage is not good just for the couple, but for the community as a whole. As a church, we teach that marriage between two baptized people is a sacrament. The Old Testament saw the marriage as a symbol of the covenant between God and his people. So it's a permanent and exclusive union between a husband and his wife. And it also shows us a mirror of the commitment between God and his people. So it's bigger than you think. It's not really just a commitment to your spouse, it's a commitment to the church and to the community. And lastly, Ava wants to know why we use water for baptism. As we know, Jesus was baptized in the Jordan by St. John the Baptist. We know that he was baptizing with water in preparation for the Messiah. Jesus got baptized in that same way, so we mimic that in our baptism. But there are some specific reasons we use baptism. If you think of water, you think of life, you think of the fact that all living things need water to survive, you think of the fact that submerging yourself in that water is similar in representation to when Christ died and was buried. And when we exit the water, we, like Christ, are resurrected with him. So submerging into death and coming out of the water back into life. Water is used to clean, one of my favorite water songs, is used one of to my drink, bands. water is used to have you guys back on in Monday. ceremonies to prepare your so. hands and make them holy when Father is uh, consecrating the, the Eucharist in the celebration of communion. So those are four very different sacraments and four very different um, approaches to how we believe things in the church. So thank you to you four for those questions. And like I said, I'll leave you with the Foo Fighters and we'll check in right before we leave. Here's Seattle's own Foo Fighters. Mackenzie Adams reminds me of another outstanding teacher who holds a very special place in my heart. My mother, Virginia, who was a public school teacher for 35 years. Like Mackenzie and Dr. Jill Biden, she was also a mentor to her students, remembered long after their graduation. This year, our teachers were faced with unprecedented challenges, but through dedication and creativity, they faced those challenges head on. So this next song is for Mackenzie and all of our unshakable teachers that continue to enlighten our nation's kids every day. This is called Times Like These. I, I'm a one-way motorway I'm a road that drives away Follows you back home I'm a streetlight shine 
It's times like these you learn to live again. It's times like these you give and give again. It's times like these you learn to love again. It's times like these time and time again. favorite songs one of my favorite bands thrilled to have you guys back on monday we'll see you soon